February 24, 2009, here at Town Hall. I'd like to call this meeting to order. And uh, the first <coughs> issue on our agenda today is election of officers. We normally have um, two positions. One is chair and the other is vice chair or commonly referred to as the secretary. Um, <coughs> could I have nominations for those two positions, please? I would like to nominate uh, Mr. Galino as chairperson again for Sony Board of Appeals. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if elected, would you accept it? I, I will indeed. <laughs> I will indeed. Um, it's been fun serving, so I'm happy to continue in that role. Um, any other nominations for chair? Seeing none, all in favor of the uh, appointment of the, myself as chair. Can you vote for yourself? Got it. Of course. That's good. Mama <laughs> voted for himself. Um, and then the next position uh, is the nomination of uh, a secretary, and I uh, nominate Jay Chapman for that position. I would second that. All in favor? Unanimous for Dr. Chapman for secretary. Did you want to give uh, acceptance speeches? Yeah, we have an acceptance speech from Jay. No? Uh, <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> Yes, we can. We will do a good job. <laughs> Bruce isn't here, so we can do that. <laughs> um, the next order of business to approve is to approve the minutes of November 25, 2008, which were included in the packet that we received. Uh, we brought, basically um, had one matter on the agenda that day. Um, anyone have any comments on those min minutes? I move that we accept the minutes as submitted to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Second. All in favor? I should probably abstain since I wasn't here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and the third order of business is to welcome our newest member, John Thibodeau, to the board. Thank you. Uh, John is a member of the business community locally, and um, he'll bring a lot of experience in the business world to this board, so we look forward to his involvement. Um, and the next item is old business, of which I think there is none. And the new business is the main course for today, which is to hear the request of Leslie uh, Grimshide. I'm sorry? Gurmshide uh, of Three Apple Tree Lane, Tax Mr. Map U58. Mr. Chairman, for, uh, before we do that, can we do a roll call just for the record? Thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. Um, why don't we start right here on the, down on the right side with Dr. <coughs> Chapman. Jay Chapman. James Walsh. Peter Howe. Len Galino, Chair. John Thibodeau. <clears throat> um, back to the request. <coughs> Uh, for a conditional use permit to operate a home business, specifically a ther therapeutic massage business. Um, if the applicant can come up to the podium and <coughs> present their application, please. I do believe you all have copies of that application. I think we all, each one of us has it already. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm not exactly sure what, you know, as far as a presentation. Um, I've had a home business in Needham, Massachusetts um, for seven years. It <coughs> works very well for me. And um, I have a very similar situation in my current home where the, uh, I have a, an office on the first floor with an adjacent <coughs> bathroom which is, makes access um, for clients very easy. Uh, I know that there are several concerns as far as the application. One is, you know, water and sewage and that kind of thing. And I, I certainly have public water. I don't, um, I have public sewer. There shouldn't be any kinds of, um, you know, substances going down the drain that are toxic. Um, traffic is also a concern. Um, currently, it's a, it's a very slow street. It is in a development, um, but I don't anticipate really having more than four clients a day 
come to see me. Uh, when I worked in Needham, the maximum number in a week that I saw was 18, and it just about did me in. Usually 15 <laughs> was the most, and my average was around 10 to 12 in a week. So it's not a, a, a super big you know, turnover business. Mm -hmm. um, I do medical and uh, orthopedic massage. That I, I do some uh, relaxation, but mostly I like to focus on medical and orthopedic because I find it more interesting. I advertise to physicians uh, and send them brochures and try to get referrals that way rather than really doing mass advertising. Uh, as far as signage, um, I actually, I don't have a sign. I didn't have a sign in the I was not allowed to have a sign. Uh, and my mother-in-law actually came up with a logo, or it, it took my logo and made a quilt, and this is the only sign, really, it's just a flag, and it hangs from a flagpole off the side of the garage, so my, when my clients arrive, they know because of the logo and my business card that they arrive in the, the right place. Uh, trying to think what the other concerns would be um, for neighbors. Um, I, I'm open to questions. Sure. Joe? Yeah, go. Uh, have you met with Have you met with your neighbors, and uh, what kind of reaction did you get? Okay, um, we moved November nineteenth, um, and very slowly we've met neighbors. One neighbor did come over, um, and I, I told her what I was hoping to do, and she really had no reaction at all. I I actually sent out a letter to um, the neighbors that are around me, and I've since heard back from them, actually, um, because they'll be walking their dog. We've seen them when we've been out clearing the snow, that kind of thing. And so far, the reaction has been positive, and who cares? You know, it sounds very good. If you would like to see a copy of the letter, I have extra I copies here. Be good, I think. Yeah, yeah. Put in the right hand. Sure. So this went out to... This neighbors all along Apple Tree and um, it was really a rough trail. I mean the ones that, you know the, the people that I, I think would you know have direct sight of, of my house or might have traffic go in front of. Do you know how many neighbors there were that this went out to? Um, probably about 12 or so. I don't know. The, I don't have to count here. One, two, three. Do you have uh, room for off-street parking for all your customers? I have a very long driveway, and it's a three-car garage, so there is room in that area for people to park. Uh, in the house, it's just my husband and myself, so that he is pretty much gone during the day at work, so it shouldn't be an access problem. And I certainly would encourage people to park off the street. Yes. And are you also a practicing physician? Um, I am a physician. I am no longer practicing medicine. Okay. Other questions? Um, the Cross Hill development um, has a set of covenants for, uh, that are recorded. Have you reviewed those? Um, I've reviewed those. I've spoken directly with Stephen Parkhurst, who's the, I guess the people have said that is who to talk to. I spoke with him on several occasions and he had no problem at all with this. Mm -hmm. and, but have you read them? And yes. Is there, any, is there anything in there that addresses specifically Not that home I can, business? Um, I, well, I, I am asking, you got a copy, you must have received a copy as part of the purchase and sales when you purchased the home in November. Right. In. I read them a while back. Um, <clears throat> I can't think of any. Okay. I, it's been a while, so. All right, so in filling the application out, you've addressed all the questions that the town has asked you. Right. But there are specific ordinances that have been, or covenants that have been recorded against the deeds in this particular development. So I think that there 
I think the zoning board, I would ask a question of our chair, should we request a copy of those and review them as part of this application? Um, I don't know that that <coughs> is, <clears throat> I'd be interested in Jay's thought on this as well, but I don't know that that's really our jurisdiction to enforce private rights. That seems to me to be a private right among the association members, and it sounds like we're going to hear from some of them, and we can wait to, to hear what they have to say. But I don't see anything in the ordinance that requires us to review private rights. It would be like, it seems to me, if there was an easement issue, I suppose if it's brought to our attention, we can take it into account. Uh, but I don't <coughs> see anything specifically in the uh, section 9.55 on conditional use permits that requires us to yeah. go in and uh, make that determination independently. So we'll see if any of the okay. uh, other parties here want to raise that as an issue. Mm -hmm. other, uh, other questions for the applicant? I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Dr. Germscheid? Mm -hmm. Was that close? Yeah. Good. Uh, you moved to Cape Elizabeth last fall, is that correct? In uh, November, yes. In November. And you were previously in Massachusetts? Yes. And you were doing this out of your home in Massachusetts? Yes. Okay. Uh, your clients that you see or saw in Massachusetts mm -hmm. and potentially will see here for treatment, how long <coughs> is each appointment typically scheduled for? Um, typically, the appointments can be either half hour, one hour, or an hour and a half, and I schedule them with a half hour in between, so there should not be overlap. How much in between? Half an hour. Half an hour. Now, do you, in your past situation, you did enforce that with a half hour in between? Uh, yes, I need the rest. <laughs> Um, typically, uh, what I would do is two patients in the morning and then two patients in the afternoon so that it, it wouldn't be patient half hour, patient half hour, and I'd run the risk of them backing up if that just didn't happen. Uh, there are a number of issues that we as a board are concerned with and uh, uh, standards that we have to base our decision on, and one is the, the parking situation. Because your driveway is along narrow driveway, uh, if you had two that overlapped at all, it would be difficult for the second first person right. to leave when the uh, second person arrived. Uh, another issue that we're concerned with is uh, the safety issue of own street parking. And we do need for all parking to be off street you to provide parking, and, and certainly you have a long driveway. If there is any overlap, that I can see where there would be an issue mm -hmm. uh, for the first person leaving after the second person arrived. Uh, but if you are diligent in spacing those with adequate time in between and are aware of that situation, right. that would be an issue because uh, safety is an issue and we do not want on street parking to become a safety issue in, in that situation. Do you foresee that as being a problem? I don't. Okay. Uh, now, in your past situation, I assume you're going to have or strive for a similar type situation here where you have 10 to 18 clients a week. Is that correct? 18 was really pushing it. I would probably be 10 to 15. Okay. Uh, another standard that we, you, we need to observe is a maximum of 10 car trips a day. Right. Each client being two car trips, one in and one out. Um, do you, and I noticed that you had scheduled 10 hour days from 8 o'clock to 6 o'clock as your potential hours. Um, do you ever foresee the point where you would want or need to go beyond that limit. I mean, you certainly, it appears you have the time to, or the time you've requested, and, and I'd like to address that in a minute, but current, your current requested time between eight and six, mm -hmm. you have the potential to see more than five. I have the potential, however, physically I can't handle that many people. I'm, I'm 
have a constraint just because I, I know what I can handle and going over four, four hours in a day is killer for someone my age. I mean, if you're just coming out of school, you might try to do eight people in eight hours, but that's insane. Uh, a, another question that I have is regarding your hours, your selected mm -hmm. hours or mm -hmm. your requested hours. Is that, is that your desire, are those only hours that might work, or is there any flexibility with those hours? Typically what I do is I, I have that time frame so that I allow the patients the option to try to schedule during a day, and I don't want to lock myself into, you know, a very small time frame, but I do want to be able to accommodate an early morning appointment or the end of the day appointment for somebody trying to get home from work, that kind of thing. Um, sometimes I have moms that need to come while their kids are in school, so, you know, they may want to be there from 11 to 12, that kind of thing. So that's why I have that wide time frame. It's to uh, offer the flexibility to the patient. And on one day, Wednesday, you requested for evening hours. Uh, what is the reasoning behind that? I have some patients that I know in my last position, um, in Needham, I had several requests to do evenings. At the time, I didn't because I still had kids at home and it, it, it got very noisy after a certain point. So now that my children are in college, it's pretty quiet during the day so that I can extend into the evening and offer those slots. Do you, where will your potential client base come from? I'm hoping uh, mostly from physicians, dentists, that kind of thing, people that have um, musculoskeletal pain. So direct referral basis as opposed to walk-in type? Oh, there won't be any walk-ins. That, well, that, that would be... I didn't mean walk-in. Uh -huh. I meant, are you, do you intend to do cold advertisement for un, for? unknown people to telephone you and say, I need this service? Well, in Needham, they had um, what, what they called the Exchange Club phone book, and I did have a, a, a listing again, in the local just for Needham phone book and under massage therapy, and I did get some people that would call me from that. Um, you know, they would overdo it shoveling snow, that kind of thing. So they would go to that first. Um, uh, but pretty much I, I didn't do advertising. I found it didn't really work that well anyway uh, in the Needham area. And word of mouth and the physician referrals really were the best. Do you intend to advertise here? Uh, I will look into it. I don't know what the pricing is just to get my name out initially, but I don't anticipate having a lot of advertising, no. So, yes, you may. Is I might, yes. Okay. If, if you would um, want to make comments, if you would come to the podium, because that's where the, there is a TV camera that focuses on the applicant. So if you, don't, if you want to make comments, if you don't mind going over the podium, as long as the applicant wants to uh, defer to you, that is. Will you defer to me? I suppose so. <laughs> it's a quick comment. I, I work at Maine Medical Center, and I, I work with physicians all Could day. Could you long. please identify yourself and your I'm answer. sorry, Barry Blumenfeld. I'm Liz's husband, and uh, um, live at the same address. And, I uh, want her, of course, to get her opportunity with her massage therapy business. Uh, what I was going to state was simply that I, I work at Maine Medical Center, so one connection or one hope, of course, is that that I would uh, would help generate referrals to her. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you.
Other questions, Jay? Not at the moment. Um, just so I'm clear about uh, the little discussion you had with Dr. Chapman. Um, it sounds like you're comfortable with a limit of five, five clients or five patients oh, gosh, per day. Yes. Oh, because gosh. that would be basically 10 trips per day. Yes. Okay. And you're also uh, comfortable with a prohibition on any type of signage. Yes. Except you would like to be able to use this flat, correct? Is that correct? Yes. And you're also comfortable with the limitation that there would be no off street park, no on street parking, it would be all off street. Yes. And I take it you're also comfortable with limitation that your hours would be limited to those described in your application. Yes. Other questions? I, we do have two letters that I would like to address, comments, unless you intend no, to. Fine. No, I didn't no, see those. You go ahead, please. They're, they're attached here. Have you seen the letters? I'm sorry? Have you seen the letters that were sent? No. I, I, Call Bruce Smith today to see if there had been any comments thrown his way, and I guess he went out early today, so I never heard back from him. I, I called at one. Why don't you uh, take these then? Here's another set for your husband if he wants to take a look at him. <laughs> if he's got his glasses, you'll be able to. These have been individuals that received your letter. Any chance? Not sure the second one. one of, the second one did. Okay. So the first one would not have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. <clears throat> Obviously, we have a, a couple of questions on the table. You know, yes. one about safety and the other one obviously relative to the covenants in the Correct. particular development. Correct. The way I think I'd like to handle these comments is to give the applicant an opportunity to read those. We'll take other comments from the gallery because it looks like there yep. may be other opposition and then allow the applicant to respond Great. to all the uh, comments at the same time. That's fine. So if you have further application uh, questions for the applicant. Nope, that's fine. Besides the responding to the comments. Do you have anything else you want to add to the application at this time? Um, no, we'll I We'll give you an opportunity to, re to respond to all the okay. comments that are received, including those, and we can have a few minutes to read those. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to add one other just clarification, really. Question about the driveway. It is a long driveway but it widens out considerably at the top. So anyone pulling all the way into the driveway, there's room actually for more than two cars on it abreast. Thank you. 
Okay, um, now that the applicant has spoken, is there anyone else here who would like to speak in support of the application? Okay, seeing no takers, is there anyone here to speak in opposition to this application? Sir, would you come up to the podium and identify yourself and your address, please? <coughs> My name is Fred Sprague, and I live at 33 Cross Hill Road. We were the, I guess, sixth or fifth or sixth house in the neighborhood. Been there um, about eight years now. And of course, one of the reasons that we picked uh, that neighborhood was because of the, the covenants that were written around that, uh, one of which prohibits, uh, uh, well, it says that the lot shall be used for residential purposes only. Um, I can't address any problems with children and so forth because we don't have any at home, obviously. Um, but uh, I wasn't notified that we were even uh, having this discussion. And I think, I guess, I feel that uh, if you were going to try to do something like that in the neighborhood, given the neighborhood designed as it is, um, that uh, we should make an effort to let everybody in the neighborhood know that this subject was coming up. Because if it wasn't for a phone call tonight, I wouldn't even be here. Uh, so I think we could have done a much better job at notifying people in the neighborhood uh, that we were contemplating what I consider to be a change in the nature of the neighborhood. So uh, I guess that disappointed me. Um, I'm still not sure that I think any kind of a business ought to be operating in that neighborhood. I think a business such as this, as this could be run downtown here someplace, uh, very close by. It doesn't have to be in a residential neighborhood. Well, we have to worry about uh, people beginning to use that as a drive-through now because the roads are in such bad shape, um, you know, going out around to go through town, so they cut through the neighborhood. And they're going pretty fast through there, especially in front of my house, which doesn't bother me so much, but it certainly bothers my neighbors who have small children. Um, so I guess any increase in traffic uh, I would be against. Um, and I'm worried that this might promote other businesses developed in the neighborhood, and I'm against that. So uh, I think it should be a residential neighborhood. Sir, did you bring the, uh, the bylaws or the declaration with you? Would you like to submit that to us? I will if you can. Yeah, sure. Please. And if you could point out to us that where's the provision you're referring to? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I may yep. uh, point out one thing, and that is that yes. the issue before us is, is application for a home business, and uh, which is applied for under the conditional use permit from the town of Cape Elizabeth. That is determined by the district in which that's a district issue. Mm -hmm. Cross Hill is in the RB district, residential B. Residential A is what the smaller, older uh, uh, community uh, subdivisions in town are. Cross Hill is in residential B. According to the town ordinance, residential B, home business and a home occupation are permitted according to the town ordinance. I that. We have no jurisdiction over subdivision covenants, association rules, which were part of purchasing the property. And if, if, that. if that exists, that is not within our control, that's within a subdivision ruling or, mm -hmm. or at time of purchase of the property. So all we can comment, your statement regarding the association covenants could be valid or not. Regardless, it's not, uh, pertinent to our discussion tonight. From a residential B standpoint, a home occupation and or mm -hmm. a home business is permitted in that area. So I just want to point that out. Sure. Uh, now, if, if, if it's determined by covenants within Cross Hill, then that certainly is something that could be pursued uh, from a different avenue, from a I different venue, also, but not at, right. not here at this, this point. Right. Just would like to point that out. 
But I'm still allowed to uh, state my case, am I not? Sorry? I'm still allowed to make a statement, am I not? Absolutely. Okay. Thank of course you. you are. And we appreciate well, your comments on that. Could, could either, either Jay or Ken, can you explain the notification issue, which was one of his first issues? Uh, How that does that was, work? That was, do you, yeah, I mean, because I, you drew, you you raised the issue of notification yeah, about this event. Maybe we ought to Bruce, explain. It. Bruce is not here to address it, the whole code enforcement officer. But the standard protocol is it to go out to the immediate vicinity, immediately around the subject property. I'm not sure exactly there, how many it is. That I I cannot. I'd like you to see this, yeah. if you would, um, please, sir. Feel free to pass this around. Mr. Sprague, uh, this is from the town. Uh, the, the town has certain guidelines, and I can't quote those. It's, it's a certain diameter within the subject property of 1,500 feet or so many properties, either or so many properties that have to be notified within, within the, that area. If you did not receive this, then that it's the town's policy, in my past experience, they've been very good about sending these exact notices out to notify the, the nearest so many properties as well as the nearest diameter to try to include and notify everybody. Yes. And uh, I did get a notification on that particular change and I had the chance to come and speak about that. Yeah. You know, and it could be because are you closer? It could be that you're closer to I that road. Yeah. Now, it's, I, regarding this, I yeah. have no knowledge as to the, the, the town offices send this out. But, and I don't know why, whether you should have or whether no, you shouldn't have. I, don't I, should, I shouldn't have been notified according to the town. Yeah. Yeah. If there's a certain distance. Sir, would you like to identify yourself, uh, sure. please? Sure. My name is John O'Sullivan. I live at uh, 22 Cross Hill Road with my wife and uh, six young children. Um, I did get the notice from the town. I guess I'm within the, the radius. I did not receive Leslie's letter, however. Um, I'm opposed to this. You know, primarily, I think it's a safety issue with the traffic and the vehicles coming in. A lot of children, small children in the neighborhood. My kids are always in the summertime, spring and fall, riding the bikes along the sidewalk, right, in, right around Apple Tree, up and down Cross Hill Road. There's a big uh, green there, if you're familiar with the area. Children are always congregating in and around there. So safety would be my biggest, biggest concern. I also think it's just setting it. There are a lot of doctors, physicians, other professionals in the neighborhood. And uh, once we start to head down this path, I mean, what's to prevent? my next door neighbor from having dental clients in his house or somebody opening up a barber shop down the road. I just think it sets a, I don't know what the current zoning is as opposed to a first type of business like this, but once you do it for one business, I think it opens us up to additional number of businesses of this, this type, which would uh, increase the traffic in the neighborhood. And I also just, I just wonder what is the question for the board? Uh, what's the definition of a home-based business? Do you want me to? Can you? Do you want me to read that? Or you, sure, go ahead. Uh, the uh, these ordinances are all they're published and in, in upstairs. That if you want to get a copy of it, and, and they're available. On the website. And available for you to read. But it basically, home business or professional use that is more intensive than a home occupation, which is conducted within or from a dwelling unit by an occupant or a dwelling unit. The use may also be conducted within an, an accessory structure, which existed as of April 1 of 1998. Business or professional use shall be accessory to the primary residential use. Home business shall comply with all of the following criteria, and then it lists those criteria. There are seven of them. The first one is not more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be involved or employed on the premises in the business or professional use. Two, the nature of the business or the professional use shall not increase vehicular traffic on the street by more than 2% of the current average daily traffic 
AADT, or 10 trips a day, which we've referred to earlier, whichever is larger. Number three, the business or professional use shall not produce any odors, fumes, dust, glare, noise, electrical interferences in excess of that produced by normal residential use. Four, any external alteration of the building or site, including the provision of parking in accordance with section 1978 off-street parking, shall not detract from the residential character of the neighborhood. Five, the square footage occupied by the business or the professional use shall occupy in an area no greater than 20% of the floor area of the structure as defined above of the dwelling unit. And six, all signs shall comply with the sign ordinance. And seven, there shall be no outdoor storage of equipment or materials. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Assume this would qualify then as a home base business, assuming that. It's pretty, yeah, the traffic's pretty low, and it's also a very low-impact type of business. I think it's different than like a dental practice or a barber shop, where generally both of those have signage on the outdoor. The, the, the code itself, just by way of a little history, the code or ordinance itself allows for signage, but this panel has been pretty conservative about that, and when this issue's become before the board in the past, we've usually by consent of the applicant, restricted the use of signage or precluded the use of signage. And it sounds like that's what we're doing here, which cuts down on the amount of impact. Also, that's the definition, but then under 1955, there are other requirements that we have to make sure are met. Well, one of the most important in my mind is that it does not create a hazardous traffic condition. And once again, it's a very low impact type of uh, activity because you'll, she'll only have one uh, client or patient there at a time as opposed to some other home-based businesses that could have multiple uh, customers at any one time. Um, so I think from that perspective, it's relatively low uh, uh, limited uh, impact. But I don't think it could be that diff. If somebody wanted to open a doctor's office down the street without a sign, it's not a lot. I don't see the difference other than Well, the type they, of they only can have one person employed there, which, which is the home-based person. So, I mean, they couldn't have nurses. They couldn't have dental hygienists, any of that type of stuff. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Sir, would you like to identify yourself, please? Absolutely. My name is Daniel Flaherty. I live at uh, 31 Cross Hill Road in Cape Elizabeth. Um, I, I, I received this from my neighbor across the street. I, I did not receive one of these also. I, apparently I'm not in the, the radius. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a native of me, so I guess the hospitality thing to do would be to, to welcome our new neighbors to the neighborhood. It's, it's, it's a little awkward meeting you this way, but um, welcome, welcome anyways. Uh, I, I want to thank you for explaining the, the, the ordinance, the, the zoning ordinance, because I was not aware of that. Um, I was not aware that we're in a residential B. I, I have similar concerns to what these two gentlemen said. I have, I have uh, three small children, and it's it's a very active neighborhood. Uh, w one part is actually the green, which is very close to the residence, and y you'll always see kids out there playing ball, um, you know, after school during the summertime. So uh, I don't know how the town. Uh, I certainly understand the ten trips. That's that's five people coming and going. Um, I don't know how that's monitored. I don't know how you monitor on street parking, if, if that happens to be the case. I mean, do we, do we have to tattle on our neighbor? I mean, I don't know how that works. Does the code enforcement officer police that? Um, I also know that um, being in business, in a home-based business, you, you most likely get more deliveries, I suspect, than, than you might otherwise, maybe from UPS. I mean, you have additional supplies and equipment that might be needed that you otherwise wouldn't get. Maybe those are delivered. I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, but in general, uh, you know, I, I, I am concerned, you know, I'll, I'll mention the covenants. That's when we bought from Mr. Parker, we reviewed the covenants. Residential, that's why a lot of us bought that in that neighborhood, so the residential feel. Um, and I am concerned that uh, you know, there, there could be other businesses. There could be more of these. It could be barber shops. It could be whatever. Um, I can't think of all of them that may apply, but it, it seems like there's a number of businesses that may apply. And the, the streets 
in Cross Hill are very narrow, and they were intentionally designed very narrow to prevent you know, people from cutting through in, in a lot of traffic because of the, the, the family friendly nature of it. So, I mean, I, I think the whole design of the neighborhood was around residential. It was around supporting a family environment with the greens, have a basketball court there. And I think we ought to try to preserve that if we can. Now, I certainly recognize that you have rights and you have ordinances that you have to follow, and I'm, I support that 100%. Um, one of the questions I would have is, is what's the process for getting a change from an RB to a, I guess it's an RA, which. Say that again. Is, is, is RA less allowed? Would this be allowed in an RA? It would be? Okay. Is there any zoning ordinance that can't have a home business in, in Cape? RA and RB, you can't, which are. Right. Is there, any, is there any zoning designation where home businesses are not allowed? Okay. Um, I can't answer that I, okay. conclusively I'm just, not. But I, I believe that they are permitted. Uh, throughout, anywhere in Cape, a home business. Well, there's, there's the commercial areas uh, where, you know, commercial enterprises are allowed, so they're sort of subsumed within that designation. But, um, you know, all the people here on the panel are all volunteers. They probably haven't um, memorized the ordinance, which is, as you can see, right a voluminous document. Uh, you're welcome to view it online on the Cape Elizabeth website, mm -hmm. and you can page through each of the various uh, areas to determine that. Um, and there, of course, is the um, code enforcement officer, and there is also um, Maureen O'Mara, who's the uh, town planner, mm -hmm. who um, can discuss those kind of issues, such as zoning changes with you. It's not an easy process, but certainly uh, we're just going through the comprehensive plan, and I'm not even sure what the status of that is yet, if they, they're still in the process right. of going through the comprehensive yeah, yeah. plan. It's still in the process. And there's a whole committee that's been put in place to review this and come up with new plans and new uh, provisions to take into account concerns like yours. Okay. Thank you. And again, I, I, I'm sure you, you run a very good business. I'm sure of that. This isn't any um, way meant to disparage that. It's just a lot of us are there because of the, the, the community and the, 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 the family feel of it and the, the yeah. quietness, the residential nature. So it's just, yeah. ch change is tough for us. Right. And, and, you know, we totally uh, appreciate all your comments. And um, just by a little background, I live just down the street from you folks over in Elizabeth Farms. And before Cross Hill came in, I used to hike the land where you're on and cross country ski it. And when I heard the proposal to build there, I practically cried because I thought, you know, this beautiful, pristine land and how could we do this? And, you know, I ranted or raved and yelled at my wife a couple times probably about how unfair this was. But then, you know, I read the ordinance and I realized, you know, life goes on, progress goes on and people move into areas and this is what happens. So we come up with rules. And that's kind of what we're imposed to, you know, apply. Um, so our job is to try to read these pretty close to the vest and not uh, be overly permissive in what's allowed, but what it is allowed by the ordinance to allow it to go forward just as the um, planner did and the code enforcement officer when they allowed Cross Hill development to go in. So that's kind of the same position we're in. Understood. Thank you. Welcome. I can make a comment. I, I, in regard to to the comments that were just made. Um, one of the things that we can do, and I suspect we will do, is that we can attach conditions to this conditional use uh, in regard to the issues that, that you have raised, you know, traffic, safety, those kinds of things. And I suspect that you will see us at least discussing those kinds of conditions. And in regard to how you enforce it, uh, that's a little trickier, I must admit. But one of the things we can do is that should we impose conditions on the, on the uh, use, uh, we can require that those be actually be registered in the county registry of deeds uh, where anybody can see them and anybody can then essentially require the town to enforce the conditions that are there. Uh, just a comment for your <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, and, and regardless of whether or not they're recorded in the Registry of Deeds, any of the conditions we put in place are applicable. And um, uh, to be honest, you know, the code enforcement officer has the responsibility to enforce all the ordinances and conditions that are put on, put on, but of course he's just one person, and of course the squeaky wheels get the uh, grease. So it's not uncommon for him to get phone calls and say, you know, somebody's cutting down trees in an unauthorized area, those kind of things. Uh, and he'll go out and check it out, and if it's appropriate, he'll, he'll uh, issue uh, a cease and desist order of some sort to try to stop the inappropriate be behavior. So obviously, um, you know, you can keep an eye out to make sure that the applicant is complying with whatever conditions we put in place. Just can I add one more comment? Sure. I, I would uh, like to maybe suggest that, that you, you revisit the, the hours, I, I think. You, you brought up the, the point that it's, it's eight to six, which is a very long time. Um, and, and I'm wondering if, if somehow, you know, maybe thinking about the school year, that, that, that somehow those can be tightened up a little bit. I, I certainly recognize that you have, you may have um, clients that may need to have night treatment, but I, I think you've requested one night. So maybe on the other days, maybe it can be, I don't know, eight to three or eight to four to, to at least allow, so when kids are home and they're out playing after school, that there isn't that extra traffic. So that would just be something I'd ask you to, to reconsider. Sure. Thank you. I have a couple of comments regarding all three of your comments that I would like to respond to. I think all three of your, your comments were valid. These are comments that I think any homeowner would be concerned about or uh, would mention. I think all three of uh, your ideas were of concern. Either however, whichever side of the issue you're on, either fortunately or unfortunately, a home business is permitted in this district. Uh, that's known, it has been for some time. Uh, it's published in the ordinance and it, it is the, the onus lies upon the, the purchaser of the property to know this. I know that's a rather nebulous situation that you're not gonna go read ordinances before you buy property. Nevertheless, it, it was in existence and it does affect your housing area, resident, being residential B. So from that standpoint, this is a permitted use of, of the property whether you agree with it or not. Now, all three of you did mention, as well as these two letters, were issues of safety, either traffic or, or children or issues of that, and I think those are also valid concern. Uh, we, as a board, typically don't impose restriction on hours un unless there's a call for such. I mean, we, we try to put it in perspective. If there is a request, then, then we will certainly address that request. And if it's, depending on whether it's reasonable or possibly considered unreasonable, uh, we would put the onus back on the requestor to provide findings of fact as to why the hours requested are unreasonable. I mean, uh, where it stands now, since this is a permitted use, then if there's parking provided and all the other issues that were gone that, uh, that were previously read, then, then we address it within that light. Uh, with the other thing that was mentioned uh, was how was this monitored? The town does not have any facility to monitor these rules and regulations for home businesses. The, the, uh, it's based on what was mentioned earlier. If, if neighbors, homeowners, residents see that there's a breach of what was agreed to in a, at a meeting like this, then, then it's that responsibility to call the town, the code officer, and say there are cars blocking the street. Uh, there are a lot there appears to be a lot more visits than 
five in a day. So uh, that responsibility lies upon the neighbors and is whether, however you want to deal with it, can and should be reported if, if, if the requirements are not met. So to answer that question, that's how it's monitored. The town does not have the facility to do that or the, or the, or the manpower to do that. Okay, um, we have one other person here. Did you want to speak in support or against this application? Just observing, fine. Sir, you had another comment? Sure, if you would just come up to the podium, please. I apologize for asking this again, but the covenants are, are association covenants that have been registered with the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. I know it's outside of this board's jurisdiction, but now these covenants prohibit a business use of the property. Again, it's outside of your jurisdiction. But how does that, I mean, come into play in the scheme of things here? Well, the um, first point is I, I wonder if, it, if they really do violate the covenants. And I don't mean to render an opinion or uh, no, be, the no, be all and know all about these covenants, but just reading them briefly, it says, use of the property. The lot shall be used for residential purposes only. But then down below it says, no business, trade, or commercial activity of any kind shall be operated on the land, provided nonetheless that a residence may be used for personal or professional office work by a resident or customary home occupation. If the, co if the conduct of such profession does not entail a measurable amount of increase in flow of ve vehicular traffic on the property. So query, is this fall within home occupation? I don't know, um, within the meaning of this, this uh, easement, restrictions and covenants. So uh, that's the first question. And then as far as this is a private uh, contract between the parties that bought in that particular development, our job is to interpret the ordinance and apply the ordinance. If you believe that there's been a breach of this, then it's incumbent upon you to uh, bring an appropriate action to try to enforce the covenant. Okay. When you approved, when the town approved our subdivision with these covenants inside it, that uh, you know, it's still outside of your jurisdiction? I believe it is. Okay. Um, this is really a private contract between the parties. The, I believe that when they approve this development, they're looking at it, does the development comply with the setback requirements and all the requirements within the ordinance? I don't think they get into, try to interpret um, the question of whether or not this is narrowing down things like home occupation. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Chad, do you have a thought? No, I, I'll wait till we close the sure. discussion. Yes, the applicant now, if you want, you can comment on all the objections that you've heard. And one of the things I would ask you to address as well is the uh, question that was posed about whether or not you could live with any further restriction on the hours you've proposed. Okay. Um, first, I want to address the, um, the covenants. Um, I did not review them before I came here tonight, so hazy on that but I, I did review them before I purchased the property and that what that paragraph you just read was nebulous and I spoke with Steve Parkhurst um, before we bought and even right after and then when I said you know it's myself the cost of renting right now is is not great and considering when you start out a business such as mine you're seeing a handful of people each month I'd be going into the whole, make, you know, paying rent and not bringing in the money, and, and I also have a house that I'm working on at the same time, so I'd be staying at the office. And so logistically, it worked out well to have a home business. So I spoke with him um, probably a month ago or so, and I, I said, which comes first? You know, is this is a chicken or the egg thing. Do I go before the board in Cape Elizabeth, or do I, is there something I need to do for, the development, and he's, you know, I told him exactly what I've told you all tonight as far as the home business, and he said that he would, you know, talk to Bruce if Bruce needed a letter saying it was, you know, 
something that was okay, he would write it. So I'm, you know, I, I wouldn't want to spend $150 to come here and try to do this if I was under the impression that that was something that I couldn't do. And that paragraph was, you know, sort of nebulous as far as home business. Certainly I have no employees, um, you know, deliveries. Uh, about every three to six months I get cream delivered because um, I can't buy it locally. Um, so there's not really a whole lot of anything delivery-wise. I do my own laundry. Um, and so there's, you know, no issues with linens going in and out, that kind of thing. Have you spoken with Steve Parkhurst yes. about this issue? Could you relay the, the content of that discussion to the audience, please? The board. That's, I, I spoke with him and I, I told let me, him. Let me preface that with Steve Parkhurst being the one of the primary, I don't know the intricacies, but the developer of Cross Hill. Right. Uh, I was told he, he was the one. He's certainly foremost in, in mm -hmm. that development, therefore he would be quite familiar with the covenants of, of the subdivision. Right. So in that light, would you please relay your conversation with Steve Parker? Well, I, I called him initially and um, I said, listen, you know, I'm looking at this property and I wanted to um, find out whether it, there was even a remote chance that I could have a home business there. I told him about my home business in Needham. I told him, you know, it, how many people I was seeing and, and you know, I don't know that he asked about traffic per se, but he knew I was seeing two to four people a day. And um, what was his response about this? He didn't think that he was cautiously optimistic. From a covenant standpoint, I, I, I guess from the covenant standpoint, because that's what I was approaching him about. It wasn't about Cape Elizabeth rules. Okay. So I assumed that once I moved, you know, we bought the house and I moved in, there would be some sort of procedure. And when I called him and said, is this is a chicken or an egg situation, do I go before, you know, some sort of board or something at the development? Because I know in another development that we lived in, they had meetings for the development. Um, and as far as I know, there are none for, Cross Hill, so the, the, he basically implied to me that this this is fine, you know, if Bruce wants a letter, I'll write a letter, and, and Bruce didn't need a letter from Steve Parker, so. Uh, and one last question that I have in view of the email correspondence that mm -hmm. we received and comments from mm -hmm. the audience Every one of them have mentioned the term safety uh, of right. children and, and concern. And that could be interpreted as both tra traffic safety as well as stranger safety. Uh, I assume in your situation you will be uh, practicing home alone. To yes. How, and, and you have done this for a number of years. Seven years in the past and in the future, how concerned are you for strangers coming into your home, into your neighborhood and into your home? I screen everybody when they call, um, and certainly if they're referred from a physician or a, another patient, I certainly have, you know, sort of a, a somebody that is recommending that person to me. So, so far it has not been an issue. And, and you are aware that, based on earlier comments, that, that you're following, if this is approved, mm -hmm. that you following the guidelines as outlined will more than likely be very closely monitored by your I have no problem with that. I don't anticipate 
I mean, I anticipate actually having less clients. I'm getting older. It's hard to keep up with. I just wanted with. you to be aware of, mm -hmm. of that, 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 that That's will no probably problem. be a very effective monitoring Yeah, situation. there's no problem with that. Um, I, I, I just hope that people realize that people park along the street that are not clients. Um, there's a lot of um, parking along our street for birthday parties and friends coming and that kind of thing, moms picking up and dropping off. So. I'm just hoping people don't assume that any car that's parked in front of my house is a client and not, you know, a family member or something. Of course. And, and, <laughs> you know. But anyone who is in opposition right. is not going to be bothered by birthday parties, but are going to be bothered by yours. So, right. And, no, I understand this is, that. This has nothing to do with you or the neighborhood. This is, I think, a generalized. Certainly in Needham, we had issues. You know, I don't want somebody parking on my um, irrigation heads. People, my neighbors would say, they've got to park in your driveway. I don't want them running over my grass, that kind of thing. So, I mean, you're aware of that. I'm <laughs> definitely aware. And when I have new clients, they get an email with um, instructions on you know, directions and then where to park. And I'm very clear about that. Now, one of the gentlemen made the suggestion about possibly modifying your hours of operation. Are you willing to consider some concession on that? Uh, it's tough if you don't have evening hours for those people that are coming after work or, you know, at the end of the day. Um, I know some people will go to see me before they go to work, so that would be 8 a.m. Um, but it, it, you know, I would consider them. I mean, it would, but it, you know, it could be difficult. Uh, could you modify it to, you know, Wednesday and Thursday till six, or I mean, I mean, you give up Monday and Tuesday to four o'clock or something like that? I mean. I mean, that's a possibility. Or how about Friday, so I'd cut out early? <laughs> well, I, I, I think... <laughs> Actually, to be honest, I did cut out early on Friday so I could go yeah. get my massage, so... Yeah, I think the suggestion was made to try to alleviate right. traffic. I mean, this exactly. is a very narrow... A I realize that. This, this horseshoe, if you will, is, is very narrow. And I think what, what the concession here is trying to get so there's less traffic, if you will, when there are more individuals out and right, about. Right. Your driveway is directly next to the driveway to your, well, left-hand side, the yellow house on the corner right, across the right. hill, and then there's a driveway across the street. It's very congested. So there was a suggestion being made here. Are you, are you willing to, to, to concede a bit? It's, if that's what I would have to do, it's something to consider. It does limit me as far as growing my business. But hopefully if I can get my business to a certain level where I could get an office, if, you know, be able to afford that kind of thing. That would be it's really up for you to decide whether or not you want to propose, but modify your application. Right now your application says um, eight to six, Monday through Friday, uh, with evening hours on Wednesday to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. Um, and certainly so, Wednesday then would probably start out later, but, or, or I could do a The way your application or, reads now yeah. on Wednesdays, it's right. 8 to 8. Yeah. Okay. So you need to tell us, are you modifying your application to limit the hours to try to respond to some of the objections, or do you want us to consider the application as posted? And just so you know, the pr protocol here after you're done with your comments and or any mm -hmm. amendments, we will close the discussion. Okay. We will confer among ourselves and then we'll take a vote. Um, and well, if it's voted up, yeah. then you pass, and if it's voted down, no, it doesn't really you don't get the up, it you don't get it, so it's up to you. Um, okay, I, I, I would consider then modifications. I just don't know how to quite make them on the dime right now. Do you want to table it to next month? Doesn't say. To think about it? <laughs> Would you like a five minute break? Doesn't really address it. Yeah. Okay, why don't we take a five minute break yeah. and we'll come back and tell us what you want to do? Uh, yes, good. Yep. Oh, we're off the record for five minutes. Can we shut it down for five minutes?
Um, what I've done is um, modified this to Monday, 8 to 3, Tuesday, 8 can to I, 6. Can I stop you there for a moment, please? Uh, if, if I might. Uh, <clears throat> With this uh, conditional use permit, section 1955E, conditions of approval, uh, the board may attach conditions to its approval of a conditional use. These conditions may include, but are not limited to such requirements as one off -site, off -site, number one, off-site and street improvements, Number two, access restriction. Number three, hours of use. Number four, buffering and screening. Number five, utility improvements. And number six, performance guarantees. Uh, my concern as a board member, what I would like to do before you state your desired hours, I would like there to be a discussion within the board first. That would be my desire before we uh, ask her to offer restrictions. I'd like to have a board discussion first, a public board discussion, if we could. Um, any objection to Jay's request? The, no, fine with that. Um, you're asking for a discussion among us, but then with the potential well, to open it back up to further. That's correct. I'm um, assuming this would be helpful to the applicant to hear our discussion, <laughs> I would think. Well, yeah. Yeah. Public record. I, I yeah. want it to be discussed among us. My my only concern procedurally, um, Jay, is um, if an application if an applicant wants to make a modification to their application based upon the objections, they were certainly entitled to do that. Um, typically, the protocol we filed is after the discussion we vote, and. I'm just wondering as to the, I haven't seen it done before where we discuss the issue. Everybody puts their views on the table and then we open it up for further modifications by the applicant. My, my reasoning here is that we are at asking the applicant to relinquish hours before there's been a discussion that we even need to do such. And, and I, I didn't. I, I didn't think we were doing that. I, I, I. What I said to the applicant was, what we would do would be to, uh, after she's finished, to discuss the issue and then vote. I didn't ask her to modify it, if I recall correctly. If you took it that way, I apologize. What I said okay. was, do you want us to take this to a vote under the current application and the way it's posed? Or did you want to amend it based upon the comments that were made? That's what I believe I asked, and she decided that she wanted to amend it based upon the comments that were made by the gallery. So I'm not, I'm not suggesting one way or the other. If she doesn't want to amend it and she wants us to discuss it and vote on it based upon the current application, I think that's totally appropriate. Um, but I, I also think it's fair game for the applicant and based upon the comments for the gallery if they want to amend it. Um, they can certainly do that as well to try to reduce the amount of opposition they're facing or to make it easier to pass. Well, my feeling was that, that we would have a discussion and see whether that was an issue among all the board members well, based on comments, and then if it was, we could ask her to readdress and amend if, if she so desired. That was my desire. This yep. is a, uh, is one potential way of doing this. Um, I guess I would... Mr. Chairman, you, you make the decision. Yeah, I think I guess since we, I sort of headed us down this road, I think I would like to um, just play it out this way. I, I believe that there's some concern about the hours um, from some of the board members, and I know I am personally, so if you are proposing an app amendment that's not going to materially impair your your business plans, um, you know, I think would be, make it easier to move this along. Well, it's still better than trying to share an office with somebody and have our li limitations based on that. Yep. And um, so um, I'm submitting um, a, a change uh, Monday, 8 to 3, Tuesday, 8 to 6, 
Wednesday 8 to 1 and then starting up 5 to 8 so I can accommodate some evening people. Uh, Thursday 8 to 6, Friday 8 to 3. Okay. And so you would like us to um, consider your application with that amendment, correct? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, any further comment from the gallery? Yeah. Um, unless the applicant has any further things you would here. want to propose, I'd like to close the public aspect of the discussion and open it up for the panel to discuss your application. Okay. Thank you. Okay, as I understand the application at this point in time, the application, the applicant has amended her hours as just described to limit down to the number of hours that she would be seeing patients at her property. As I understand the applicant, she's also agreed that she will request that her customers park off the street on her driveway, that there would be no signage other than the flag that you've described and that there would no, be no more than 10 trips per day or you would see no more than five patients per day. Um, and that the hours would be limited as you just described. So based upon that application, I'd like to open it up to discussion among the board members as to their thoughts about this particular application. Who would like to start off? My, my thoughts on, well, overall, as far as I can determine from what I've heard, uh, from the applicant is that, that her request falls within the guidelines as stated in the, in the ordinance uh, for conditional use permit for a home business. Um, one, con one issue that I heard that <coughs> was addressed was concerning the hours of operation. Uh, the issue that this is a residential area and that we do have the right to address or put conditions on hours of use <clears throat> is, is an issue, and this is purely subjective on my point part, uh, a concern in a residential area is that I, I do not personally have an objection under the ordinance with her operating this business. What would possibly be a concern to me is <clears throat> that if an hours of operation, if you could, again, this is subjective, surely on my part, that if you were to define hours of operation for a business, that it might be more considerate to the neighbors and the neighborhood for those hours of operation to be typically within uh, a standardized time frame of eight to five, uh, as is a typical uh, work day for a business. Now, this is certainly different in many aspects. Uh, so, my viewpoint of this application, my only concern are the hours of operation after five o'clock. That simply being because it is a residential area and and as a consideration to residents and neighbors in the neighborhood, uh, I would certainly want to minimize uh, traffic and outside non-residents as much as possible. And, you know, at the end of the work day, that's my only comment regarding that. Otherwise, I think the application uh, certainly meets all the standards uh, to be approved. Uh, and that's why I wanted to have that discussion prior to her suggesting modified hours, simply in view of that. From a personal standpoint, <clears throat> if I were a neighbor, and since we do have the opportunity to comment on this as board members, that would be my primary concern, is, is that for her work day, and this may not meet her needs, and I understand that, and we could certainly ask her to readdress that. Uh, but that her work day ends when the typical work day ends, and that's at 5 p.m. 
Otherwise, it's a valid application, I think. Peter? Mr. Chairman? I agree it's a, uh, it, it's a valid application. It's certainly approvable. Uh, in regard to <coughs> Jay's comments about the hours, I, I guess I would have agreed with you in regard to the 5 o'clock prior to hearing the <laughs> amended hours. Uh, and I actually think the, I now think that the amended hours are, are uh, better uh, in regard to traffic uh, for the neighborhood or safety for the neighborhood than would be just ending each day at five o'clock. Again, subjective, but I, I like the idea of <coughs> less traffic in that after school period, you know, from three to dinner time. Uh, and I'd have more concern about that period than I do the five to eight or six to eight or whatever it was uh, period when kids are apt, more apt to be inside. Uh, so I, I, I guess I'm ready to approve the application. Jim? As amended. I'm sorry. Jim? Uh, well, I, it, uh, it appears the applicant uh, converted her may be adding evening hours to actually having evening hours in her modified number. The concern I have in all of this is that if she splits her day on a Wednesday, as an example, and there are five trips, they could all happen between five and eight. So from a density standpoint, there could be more traffic forced highly into a much smaller. Highly unlikely. Ship. Well, but again, we don't know. I mean, we don't know. I mean, that's, I mean, that, I mean those, are the, those are the questions. If, if I were a neighbor, I'd be asking. So, but I, I think the modification is better than what we had initially. And um, I, again, it, it, on the merits, I think it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's approvable, and, uh, and I appreciate her willingness to modify it. Great, thanks. John? Um, yeah, I think that um, you know, it, is, it is a conforming use, and uh, I do, I have, I've had some reservations about the, the safety uh, issue primarily, and, um, and frankly, some of my issues st still continue with the fact that there's some, some evening hours uh, when it's dark. Um, uh, some of the things that Jay, you said about, you know, eight to five, you know, generally it's daylight from eight to five. I mean, that, that holds some merit for me. Um, but I also think that um, um, the modification is, um, uh, is, is, an, is an improvement. Uh, I do think you're going to be held to a very high standard by your neighbors. They will be watching. Um, yeah, I, I know you don't. <laughs> I'm probably stating the obvious. Uh, and, I, and, 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 and the thing that I think gets me over uh, lays a lot, of, a lot of my concerns about this is the fact that the, that the uh, traffic is, is limited really to, to, to five patients a day. And Jim, I hear your issue on the density, and that's, yeah, that's certainly a possibility. Um, but I think between the hour modification and the, uh, the, the number of patients that could potentially be seen in a day, um, and the fact that it's a, you know, it's a conforming use to, to begin with is, you know, I support the application as submitted. Um, I would echo, um a lot of what I've already heard on the um, conforming use that's been proposed, I think as far as a impact, this is about as low an impact of a home occupation or home business that you could come up with because there's only one patient uh, in the home at a time as opposed to some other home businesses that we've looked at where there's multiple customers at the home at a time. Um, so from that perspective, I think it's relatively low impact. I uh, uh, have sympathy for the safety issues that have been expressed and uh, the fact that children are in the neighborhood. Um, so, uh, and also Jay's comments, I, I think I came into tonight thinking that I preferred not to have any traffic after it started to get dark, but um, rather than relying on my own subjective uh, views on that, I think I, after thinking about it, concur with some of the comments from the the parties that were objecting that the real time that your most concern is when the little kids are out in the street, which is usually right after school. So I actually think that uh, after um, listening to everything, I, I guess I've come around to 
agree with Peter and John, and I guess it was Jim, that um, the modified schedule is actually better because it eliminates three days a week anyway, any traffic um, during that uh, period of time be after school to dinner time. And, um, you know, and, and I just think you, I would encourage the applicant to um, make sure that, um, you know, you can do whatever you can to remind your customers that it is a residential neighborhood and they should drive slowly through the area. And, uh, you know, my guess is there will be no problem and you can go a long way to make sure that's true um, by cautioning your customers as they come to your home. Yeah. Yep. So, and, and you have the type of clientele that is, they're not off on a binge, they're coming for healing. So I'm sure they'll be very mellow when they arrive at your home. Yeah. And after they have massage, they should be very nice and placid. Um, you had another comment, Jay? Two, two comments I'd like to make. If uh, in, in view of the covenant issue, Cross Hill covenant issue that was uh, brought up earlier. If, and, and I'm asking the board's uh, direction on how to approach this, how they'd like to approach this, whether we write into the, an amendment into this permit, if we grant it, that if it is determined that, that there are any subdivision, or if this is challenged, the subdivision covenants, the Cross Hill covenants, are challenged that we, uh, uh, our issue is restricted simply to the town district, and, and we have no jurisdiction over the uh, uh, subdivision covenants. And should we approach this by putting a condition in this permit, approved permit, or if there's a concern now that there might be the potential from the individuals who brought this up in the audience, uh, we can table this and they have, come, if they feel confident that it is an issue or could be an issue, that they substantiate that with finding the fact. That's one issue. Uh, the other issue regarding the uh, hours of approval, if this is objectionable either to the applicant or to people in the audience who have complained, again, that would need to be justified by finding the facts that they would bring to the board to justify that those hours are unreasonable. My point is, I'd like to, I don't want this to be viewed as the board pushing this through without, if there is reasonable objection. I want to make sure the board is comfortable that, that there either is, that we give an opportunity for people opposed to this to bring reasonable findings of the fact to justify that the hours are not acceptable whether they are or are not. So I'm not quite sure what you're asking for, Jay. Are you asking for, in the motion that we put on the table, we make clear two things. One, that this is not a ruling on the compliance with the uh, covenants, private covenants, okay. that we don't have jurisdiction on that, right. which I don't have any problem with that because I think it goes without saying, but we might as well make it explicit. And two, you were looking for a finding that, as far as the hours go, I'm not quite sure I'm catching that one. Was the, I want the board to determine, was there reasonable objection to the hours of operation as originally presented or as modified? Are you, do you want to open it up for further comment on the modified hours? I, I think I actually did ask for further comment on the modified sure hours. Clear, yeah, that if there yeah is I did. Any, uh, and there was no further comment. If, if there is any objection, I'd like to hear those. And if, it's, if it has basis, I'd like the findings of fact to be presented to the board as to why it's unreasonable. 
the hours of operation. Either unreasonable or reasonable. It's depending right. upon when we vote. I okay. just want to make sure that we we permitted the I, process. I, appre I appreciate that, this. and I will clarify that and make sure we. That was my only point, is yeah. to make sure that it, it was due process was served before we yes. uh, proceeded. Yes. And I'm quite, I'm pretty sure in my mind that I did request that you and did. it was declined to, to have further comment on the modified hours. Okay. Okay. So in the, in the motion, and I will frame the motion if, unless somebody has any objection to that, we will make that clear. Any further comments before we close the discussion to take a vote? Okay. Um, let me just pull my stuff together here. <clears throat> we have to go through and make certain findings. So um, that's what we're going to do at this point, and I'll frame the motion the best I can. Um, upon the application of uh, Les Leslie Grimscheid uh, for review of the zoning ordinance requirements of Section 1962 in accordance with Section 1955, um, a hearing was held today on February 24, 2009, to um, approve or disapprove her conditional use permit to operate a home business, specifically a therapeutic massage business. Um, during this um, uh, application, uh, the uh, applicant modified her application to make clear that she is restricting the hours of use to Mondays from 8 to 3, Tuesdays 8 to 6, Wednesdays 8 to 1, and then from 5 to 8 in the evening, Thursdays 8 to 6, and Fridays 8 to 3. She's also acknowledged that she will request that all her customers use off-street parking in her driveway. She's also acknowledged that she will not have signage on her property other than the flag with a logo on it, but with no name that she showed us earlier in the proceeding and that she will have no more than five customers or patients per day, resulting in no more than 10 um, trips per day to her home. And, um, and further, <clears throat> um, this finding an application that we're proceeding with here today, or excuse me, the application, um, is not an application for a determination of the appropriateness of this application under uh, the covenants restriction and bylaws of Cross Hill, but it's just an application for allowance of this under the zoning ordinance here in town of Cape Elizabeth. And the last point I wanted to make is that um, in this motion I'll be seeking a finding that um, we allowed opportunity for comments on the modified hours and there was no further objection received on those modified hours. That's the motion. Um, and then before we take a vote on that, we need to make certain findings. The first finding is that the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in, the, in this vicinity. All in favor of that finding? Aye. Unanimous finding number one. Number two. The proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal emissions to the air or other as aspects of its design or operation. All in favor of that finding? Unanimous and support of finding two. Finding three, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. All in support of that finding? Unanimous and support of finding three. Finding four, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. All in favor of that finding? Una unanimous in support. Number five, the design and an external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to the neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design appearance or architecture. All in favor of that finding? Unanimous in support. And I would also add to the usual findings, the finding that um, this particular application is not a determination as to the appropriateness or inappropriateness of the use within the meaning of the covenants, the private covenants of Cross Hill. All in support of that finding. Any 
Jay, do you feel I need to make any further findings? No. Okay. Could I have a second on that motion? Second. All in favor of finding that the application's been approved? Unanimous in support of the application as approved, as modified with the limited hours. Thank you very much for all your very Thank you. poignant comments. Thank you. <laughs> kind of interesting, isn't it? Did, yeah. uh, um, let's see, do we did, have any other? Did yeah. Mr. O'Sullivan want to take his covenants back? Did you want the covenants? Oh, the covenants. Those for us, or are those <laughs> for yours? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Good. Thank well, you. Thanks for participating. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's interesting, very interesting. Thank you. Um, any further communications for today? Or further business to come before the board? I have a motion to close this meeting? Seconded. All in favor, we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.